morning guys welcome back to the channel so today is a reading log as the title says and i'm just currently 10 3 i actually woke up this morning at like 7 50 something because i had to edit the video for daughter of grace channel and i'm going to render this now um friday was just a hectic day i recorded like six videos and i had to edit one but i just didn't so um I just have my eye cream I'm putting on. Some eye cream right now. Um, but yeah, today is a reading box for Pearl and Sam. I'm so excited, you guys. Do not understand how excited I am to read this book. I have read my old edition. Let me actually grab it real quick. So. I have read this copy two, three times, probably more than that. So this is literally like my fourth, third, fourth, or fifth time <laughs> reading Pearl and Sand. Five star read all the way. But this has updated scenes, updated chapters, new chapters, new content. So I'm so excited. So when I get back, I will be doing that. But I'm going to treat myself to Barnes and Nobles today because I'm stressed. I'm stressed. I'm tired. I'm, I'm over life <laughs> right now. Um, just so much is going on and um, I do have to dance tomorrow so at church I didn't dance last Sunday because my brother wasn't feeling well so we ended up coming home um, instead of going to church because we go to two churches on um, Sundays my brother plays at a church in the morning and then we have our um, afternoon evening services at my church so um, yeah so let me do this quickly. Just need to check and make sure everything is good transition wise. Hey guys, welcome back to New Testament than you do with the old. So it's important. Okay, I'm just going to export this right now. At this point, we just exporting. Um, but yeah, that is the plan. Why is my tap safe? For today. So I'm going to make a run. I'm gonna go get probably one or two books because I'm just I'm over life. <laughs> and um just me and my mom, we do this almost every other Saturday or like one Saturday a month, we just take a like a trip to Barnes and Nobles and get books and um a Starbucks drink and call it a day. But after Friday I just I can't it's my Sabbath. I'm gonna enjoy my Sabbath by reading this book. So let me put the title this is um i want this to be 1080 oh i'm like what youtube 1080 there we go um create so while i'm going that is rendering and when i get back i'll upload it hopefully we're back well, they open up 10, so we shouldn't be that long. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to fix my hair because my bun is coming out. <laughs> going to fix my hair real quick. Throw my sneakers on. And I'll take you guys with me and my mom to Barnes & Nobles. Hey, guys. So, I'm back. Um, I got back at, like, 12.30. It's 12.53 right now. But, yeah, we went to Walmart. I picked up a sweater for my little brother. And then um, I also got some stickers from Walmart just because. And then we also went to Barnes & Nobles. Um, we stopped at Burlington, but Burlington was expensive, and, um, while we were out, I was just getting frustrated because things just kept happening and stuff, so I broke my entire nail. My, my nail, like, completely came off, so I am just going to put a new one on, um, <laughs> on right now. I just, I'm literally about to glue a new one on because, whatever, um, my video is done, so I'm about to upload that. And I'm just, I'm ready to start reading. I don't know if I want to read now, if I want to read at 1.30. It's almost 1 o'clock and I'm just, I'm over life right now. I'm over it. Like, you guys will hear my family. You guys know how my vlogs are. My vlogs are really chill, laid back. So, y'all gonna hear my family. My mom is in the kitchen right now cooking. Um, she's preparing dinner. She wants to cook. Some, I think she said she wanted, not steak. I don't even know what it was that she said she wanted. But, I am gluing this nail back on. Um mind you two nails already popped off on his hand so yep um did 
pistol because I'm just I'm I'm over it. I'm I'm over it. So let me just is that right? Yep. Okay. And my thumb is back on. So just pressing down on this nail and I'm gonna show you guys what I got from Walmart and um, Barnes and Nobles in a second. Uh, I guess I don't even know what to call this video. Really don't. But um, yeah. So I have my breakfast here. Literally, I didn't even. I like we got it. I got up at eight. I edited this video. Um, then we walked. We went to uh, Walmart and Barnes and Nobles, and now I'm back. Um, we were just cleaning out the cabinets and stuff like that. I helped my mom with that. But yeah, I got this little pastry sh pastry thing. Um, and it's bacon, egg, and cheese because that's what I like. So it's hot, but I'm hungry. So sorry for eating on camera, but I'm hungry. Um, my coffee, the white chocolate, toasted white chocolate, um, frappuccino from Starbucks. Dunkin' Donuts cup, of course, with my uh, sweet cream creamer from Coso. <laughs> it's the international delight, so. But, um. I want this video to come on. Any type of situation, he will work it out. My mom was listening to that song in the kitchen, so I hear it. All right, let me just post this thumbnail. What you mean it's bigger? I know my thumbnail is too big. Oh my God. How is my thumbnail too big? Please explain this to me. But what size is it? What do you? Mm, I'm over this right now. So my thumbnail is too big. I don't understand how it's too big when it's the proper size. I'm, I'm just not gonna worry about the thumbnail right now. figure out the thumbnail later I'm, I'm not dealing with the thumbnail right now but um it says nine minutes left so I am going to private the video for now because I have to also make sure I look at it but Barnes and Noble so no at Walmart so from Walmart you guys know I love the pen and gear brand so I got a bunch of their stickers I got this set which looks like that on the back i got this one which is all my favorite shades this one here is like fun colors this is so pretty and i love the colors on here like really nice fall colors then i got this big one which has all of these colors and then this big one here which looks like that so I use these stickers and my planners I use them in my, my journals my bibles um my uh journal journal <sighs> my reading notebook my reading journal well so yeah and then so went to Barnes and Nobles and honestly I was only I really wasn't looking for anything specific but I saw this book and I've been wanting to pick it up this is I believe Christian fantasy um, a lot of people have like told told me about this book and raved about it and I definitely enjoy a good fantasy book so I definitely want to give this a go. It's called This Present Darkness by Frank E. Peretti. 
I think that's how you say his name. Um, they had it in the mass market paperback and well, as well as the regular paperback. But for some reason, I like the cover on this one versus the original paperback. So I got this one. It was only ten bucks, yeah, nine ninety nine. And um, it says it's a fast moving, riveting thriller. Um, it offers a glimpse into the unseen world of spiritual warfare and the power of prayer. So I'm hoping I enjoy this. It has really good ratings on um, Goodreads, about four point something. So yeah, it's supposed to be a thriller slash fantasy slash suspense. I don't really know, but um, I'm looking forward to reading this. And then I picked up two authors that are uh, black. Um, well, one one black and one um i think she's is she black let me look at this author she's arabic um i believe i believe but um i have this one is by samaya dodd it's court of lions uh it's the second book to the mirage i own the first book um which i didn't really care too much for the story but it was okay it was a uh, YA, YA fantasy but um i love the new covers they're really really pretty um actually let me go grab the first book for you guys and show you um i'll let the camera on so the first book is this one. So this is how the first book on um, the cover was. It's really pretty, but they updated the covers um, for it. And they now have like these illustrated covers, which are stunning. Um, so I got the sequel to it. And then I got this one, which is called Legend Born. It is YA fantasy, um, all about a black girl. We're here for it. Then I picked up two more um books because they were only eight bucks um my favorite thing about barnes and nobles is that when you go to barnes and nobles um they always have books on sale for ten dollars books on sale for 15 five sometimes three to eight dollars and these books they had um a section where they were like eight seven dollars five dollars and i saw these two now i do own um one of them and I'm not even going to go grab it because it's on that bookshelf. I don't feel like I want to get it. But I do own one of them um, already in a mass market paperback. And I'm going to just take that out of my shelf and um, probably take it back to the library to get. But um, I got these both from Nora Roberts. And it's called Year One, which is book one. It's the Chronicles of the One. And then I bought Blood and Bone, which is a sequel because my mom ended up purchasing me the third book. Which I forgot what the third book was called. What is the third book called? I don't remember, but I have the third book already. And um, these books are not cheap. This one is $29. This one is $28. So I saved $20 on here and $21 on the other one. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to have them. Um, they are gorgeous. I Like I said, I own the third book already. My mom got it for me. And um, these are, I don't, I'm, they're not, they're like fantasy it says it's an an epic of hope, horror, chaos, and magic. Um, so it's like an urban fantasy set in New York City, which I'm here for. I love those type of books. So um, yeah, and I love the end pages. Like the end pages are gorgeous in this book, and the end page in this one is just as pretty. I love that. So yeah, I just got those, and I didn't spend a lot because we are um, Barnes and Noble's members, so we have the membership card. Um, I did have some coupons to use, not coupons, is that the word, coupons, credit, whatever, um, to use, and then, um, yeah, so I did not spend a lot, thank God, thank God, I didn't, um, but I just, I needed to do something because your girl is stressed, stressed upon stressed, but yeah, so this video is almost done, three minutes, so I'm going to wait till this video uploads, I'm gonna come back at 1.30 and start my vlog for, bro, I'm saying. Hey guys, so I'm back ready to read it is 2 21 um about an hour later than i said i really wanted to read i really wanted to read this morning but you guys saw what i had to do right so we are ready to dive in into pearl in the sand Ugh. my excitement for this is like so over the top so according to goodreads i have read pearl in the sand two times i'm pretty sure i read it three times but goodreads says two times so i'm just gonna say two um so this would be my third read uh but possibly my fourth of reading this book but i'm super excited because this has new content it has some revised chapters and things like that so i'm so excited so for those who don't know what this book is about you can click the on the screen to go watch my review i've never did a reading vlog on the original version so i'm excited to have the updated version to do a um video on and i just want to thank tessa so much as well as moody publishers for allowing me to be a part of the launch team for allowing me to even have a finished copy of this book before it comes out it comes out 
Tuesday, October 6th. So the day that you're seeing, this is actually the release day. So happy release day to Tessa for the 10th anniversary edition of Pearl in the Sand. Oh my gosh, just like, ah, I want to squeal. But we're going to get into this. I'm going to read. Um, I'm going to try to make this spoiler free. I know that I do get a lot of people who tell me my videos are either too spoilery or too long or I talk too fast, <laughs> um, which I'm working on all of them. I have been working on speaking slower, of course, and I'm trying to go get into the habit of not spoiling um, my books when I talk about them. But you guys know I have a passion for books. You can hear it when I talk about the books that I read. So it's going to be hard. But what I'm going to do to limit myself is after every hundred or so pages, as long as it ends on a chapter, the end of a chapter, I will come back. So for this, it ends on page 106 so that's six chapters that i'll read and then i'll come back and talk with you guys i will have montages of me probably laying around the bed because i'm going to sit in this spot and read all day um to set the atmosphere i do have my tv ready to go with an ambiance i have a garden theme ambiance going on right now somebody's like live actual garden that they just had the camera there for like two hours or an hour and just let it record so i have that i'm going to put i don't know if i want to put ocean you know what hey google play ocean sounds I have some ocean sounds going on in the background. I also have a candle you guys can see. Um, it is in the scent Amber Orchid. It's Orchid Petals, Jasmine, Tahitian Tonka, and Amber from Candle Light Company. I got this from uh, Rite Aid for like a few bucks. Um, I like these candles a lot. I've gone through about four or five of them, so it's amazing. My last one, I need to pick up more. But um, yeah, I'm going to come back to you guys after every 100 pages or so and discuss it. Not too in-depth. Really just want to keep it mysterious for you guys so you guys can actually pick up the book. But if you haven't seen my review, definitely click the eye to go watch that. I have raved about Pearl in the Sand so many times that I'm just like, I'm excited. So I have my coffee, my annotating key, my pens, um, my sticky tabs, sticky notes here, and... For now, for a snack, I just have some Tic Tacs. I go through Tic Tacs like crazy. I prefer the orange ones and the fruity ones. But I have some white chocolate macadamia cookies over there. I have my white chocolate from Ghirardelli over there. I have some, I have like three different ice creams. I have Snickers ice cream, um, the unicorn ice cream, and the circus cookie ice cream all from Walmart um, in there. I have some Tostito chips here with chip and dip. I have salsa and I have um, creamy spinach. I'm probably sounding like a real big foodie snacky person right now. I'm sorry. But um, it's, it's my Sabbath, so I'm going to enjoy and relax so i'm going to dive in the bookmark i'm going to be using is tessa abstract's bookmark this is the one that came with the daughter of rome um book so it has daughter of rome on the front then it has bread of angels and thief of corinth on the back focus on the bookmark and not on me so yes i'm going to just lounge on it um and read i'm going to keep this copy of the book next to me just in case i want to um compare if anything but uh, yeah, I'm excited, so let's dive into the montage. Okay guys, so I only got to page 18 um, because I took my time reading the author's note. Um, Tessa wrote some phenomenal stuff in that author's note. But chapter 1 always guts me. Always guts me because of um, how Tessa 
created a beginning story for Rahab. It just, it breaks my heart. Um, one, because I know that this was true during that time and era. Um, some families gave up their daughters for, for them to earn money. But it's just like, <laughs> it breaks my heart how mean her father is and how just disgusting he is to me. Um, I just... <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna go get off this camera. I'm gonna go read and then come back after I get to page 106. Okay, guys, so I read 106 pages and just beautiful. Um, I feel like the first 100 pages will have you in your feelings, in your tears, in your um, yeah, you have you crying and things like that because it's so emotional with everything that Rahab has to go through concerning her father and her family and the way that they treat her and the way that they try to use her, and then because of betrayal and heartbreak her views on love and um wanting to be noticed are like very miscute so um i just i always those first hundred pages always gut me um and i ended off on chapter six where we finally get to meet salmon i always call him salmon but i don't think it's salmon i think it's, it's I, I don't know if it's salmon I, I don't even know his name was on the screen um, but he always irritates me at the very beginning because he's a very prideful person and he doesn't realize that he is so prideful. He swears that because he is um, an Israelite, he's so much better than the Canaanites and stuff like that. So at the very beginning, I just, I can't stand him. And I think that's something that most people tend to overlook. They don't normally think of themselves as equals to other people. They always overlook that they are literally equal. You might be a different race. You might be older you might be younger but even still we're all human so i always love the conversations with Simone and joshua because joshua is always coming for him giving him words of like wisdom so i'm excited to get to those parts but um yeah i love rahab for the simple fact that rahab is so quick to um denounce her gods and there are reasons behind her denouncing her gods that you read in the book which <sighs> broke my heart but um she immediately just has a disconnect from her gods and the minute she hears about god like the god the almighty the alpha and the omega she has this sort of longing this pull this desire to know more of him and that right there just lets you know that even though jesus wasn't around in the old testament god was still working on a way to get people back to him even though they were not of his chosen people they were not of um the israelites and or hebrew like it, it just it's amazing reading the bible um studying the bible and even reading biblical fiction like this where you're seeing god really stretch out his hand to people that don't deserve it because keep in mind she's a zona she's a harlot she's a prostitute um and it's written in the bible that they are to be stoned i don't know the scripture the scripture is on the screen right now but just seeing and reading this in biblical fiction format it's just like oh, god is such a merciful god he is such a loving god compassionate gr just gracious just just everything but um those first hundred pages always got me and then irritates me because Simone always gets to me on those first few chapters just want to punch him in the face her father Emery I want to punch him in the face um but yeah it's it's going good now my reading isn't going as fast as I want it to go because I'm really trying to like fully enjoy it and just chill like I said today is my sabbath so um yeah I'm going to read the next 100 pages so i should and i'll be ending about page 200 and 210 so that's about another 100 pages to go so that's chapter 7 to 13 so um i'm going to definitely read those chapters and then come back i'll probably have a montage of me eating some snacks i don't know um i am annotating um well i'm marking in my book if you guys can see i'm not annotating per se like writing in the book as of right now but i am marking some stuff up i haven't added my tabs yet but i'll probably do that once i get to the halfway mark i'll add my tabs in but um yeah because this book is how many pages 402 pages so when i get to yeah once i finish with this the next uh 100 pages i'll take a break from reading um i'll insert my sticky tabs probably watch an anime or a youtube video i need to edit a youtube video actually did my computer die i hope not but um yeah that's the plan i'm waiting on some packages to come in the mail so i'll probably 
insert um an unboxing in this video as well i don't want this video to be too long if you guys can see i'm holding back on spoiling some things but just know the first 100 pages might have you in your feelings it might have you in your tears your cries and all that i still haven't really drank all of my coffee i literally have been snacking and chewing on <laughs> these tic tacs so i'm going to put these tic tacs away i'm probably putting my purse for church tomorrow um but yeah i'm gonna get back to reading gonna read chapter 7 to 13 and this is when things are going to pick up because oh there the, the scene where um Rahab saved the two uh Hebrew Jew Hebrew Jews Hebrew Jews should I no when she saved the, the two Hebrew spies happened as well and I always love that scene um in the book because of the way Tessa writes it um I will say the writing in this is a lot more um you you don't see too many changes with the first hundred pages in this book compared to this book um definitely not a lot of changes but it's i don't know how to explain the writing you can tell something has shifted with the writing which i'm enjoying i'm thoroughly enjoying and i also like that the font in this is a little bigger than this the font in this was really tiny compared to this um so i'm loving that i love the paper quality definitely loving that um there is no bleeding no nothing with my pen so we love it but um there's something with the writing that you can de definitely tell that tessa is a lot more um i don't want to say experience experience is not the right word but i'm going to say experienced her writing you can definitely see that she has grown and grown in her writing um because this was her debut novel pearl in the sand was her first debut novel back in 2010 and then 10 years later you can definitely see there has been some shifting and some growth in her writing which i am loving it's a lot more um in depth a lot more um I don't I don't know how to explain but I'm, I'm feeling a lot more connected than I was I mean it's still a five star read I'm not even gonna like I can tell you now this book is a five star for me so even before like getting through this vlog it's a solid five but you can definitely see the difference in the writing from this book and the old edition um so I think for those who are reading this book for the first time this actual like 10th anniversary edition for the first time they're going to love the writing of it they're going to um enjoy the experience of reading this book for the first time um i still have all the feels and memories from the old version so I'm, I'm i'm feeling pretty good i don't know if you guys saw any clips of me like grabbing my book at the beginning because i i felt like she had added some things in that first chapter which was really really great um because there was some things concerning her father rahab's father in the beginning in the old book that i was just like okay what's this about and you know i needed a little bit more and even though it slight changes it's like slight changes um, you can see that throughout um, now maybe it's just me mentally in my head <laughs> having you know read not read this um, in a while but I feel like she did go through um, those first few chapters and add in a few words and things like that which shifted the story a little bit for me it is still a phenomenal read though so I'm going to go put them tic tics up go figure out what kind of snack I want to eat and then I'm gonna come back and y'all see me reading the book all right I got my ice cream in a wine glass. Now, I know somebody's going to be like, why? So, I used to drink wine. Um, not often, but I used to, like, just have a cup of red wine every now and then or some, like, wine. And I haven't had wine in a while. Um, I don't feel a desire to have it. And so, I have a bunch of wine glasses that I just don't use. So, what I decided to start doing was using them. Um, especially on like the weekends when my son is gone, I prefer to, you know, I put on my nice pajamas that I like, my nice silk pajamas to sleep in, my nice silk robes and stuff. I do that when my son is not here just to really take that moment. So um, I have my wine glass with some ice cream. Now it's it's not the prettiest because we don't have an ice cream scooper, but um, this ice cream is from Walmart. It's actually like the Walmart brand Great Value ice cream and it's in the flavor unicorn sparkle and it basically is cake batter it's is is cake flavored with um purple ribbons of like it's like purple i don't even it's like purple jelly i don't even know if you guys are gonna be able to see it i don't know if you guys can see like that light purple it's like a jelly but it tastes like frosting and there's sprinkles in it and it's just really really good and i found it and it was like two is 197 for like a whole tube like not tube container of ice cream is so good so got that i put my coffee in the refrigerator so i can um get cold so i'm gonna eat that read the next 100 pages and then i'll come back 
like I said, when I'm at page 210. Um, and again, I'm taking my time with reading. Don't know why. But, um, yeah, I'm going to take my time, get to page 210, come back with my thoughts. Um, and then I'll take a break and then read the last 200 pages before the evening is out. So, commence the montage. Hey guys, so, oh, here it is, let me, actually I'm not going to turn it off, I'm going to turn it down. Okay, so I did receive two packages from Baker Publishing, so I'm just going to open them quickly. I know they're sending me a few books, I just don't know which ones, because I have a bunch that, okay. So this is a contemporary romance and it's called The Key to Love by Betsy St. Amant. I have never read from this author, but this cover is gorgeous. And I love the little cookies on the bag. So cute. But um, yeah, I'm excited for this. A contemporary romance. Okay. And I think this one might be the fantasy novel. Because there is a fantasy. I think it's fantasy or biblical fiction. I, I, I think it was fantasy though. Or something like that let me get this one open and this one came in a bigger box so these are actually from rebel if i'm not mistaken yeah the little r on the side means rebel um you guys can see rebel so i do join up with rebel they do like they send out uh information every month with like anywhere from two to like five books and you can request all of them um you can request either ebooks or physical books um lately they've been telling us to request both at the same time because of covid and shipping and things like that but i prefer physical books so <gasps> this is hardcover i was not expecting that so this one is hardcover it takes place in ad 309 so um it's following rome the constantine army all right it's anti-christian politics yes we are here for it it says historical fiction um i'm assuming it's biblical though i'm assuming it's biblical sorry if you guys hear the things outside my, my landlord is out there um oh this sounds like it's gonna be interesting so here it is oh my god it's called the conqueror um and it's the constantine's empire by brian lifton lift lit fin lit fin um yes i was i really thought this was going to be a paperback copy i was not expecting a hardcover copy this is gorgeous i love it we are here for it there's a glossary we love it we love to see it so i'm excited for this actually i'm really excited so there is a map in the book there's another map here there's some extra stuff as well. So you have a historical note. 
So The Conqueror is set in the ancient church period, but it isn't a biblical novel. So it is not biblical fiction. It is strictly historical Christian fiction, which is great. I like that they let us know that from the front. Do they include scriptures? Let me see. The copyright always says no, it does not include scripture, which is fine, but it's uh, Christian historical fiction. So I love the historical context. We'll get to that. They have a dynasty of Constantine chart here. There is, um, I guess, going through the different words in Italy from Rome and um, to English. There is a glossary. This, oh, I'm excited. I'm excited you guys I am excited for this I was not expecting this like at all um, I thought it was really gonna be a paperback um, so I'm excited to this is a uh, Brian Litvin Brian Litvin is here this is exciting because I don't see many hardcover books that come from um, Baker that are normal size print normally if you do like biblical fiction and a hardcover it's a large print um, so this is interesting i'm excited so random i love the end pages they're really nice they're like a cream color and it's like texturized texturized is not the word but um he did write another trilogy previous to this um he wrote some non-fiction books as well oh he's a former professor at, of theology at moody bible institute which is actually the school that i'm looking into going to so fingers crossed i know where i want i want to go to moody bible institute to continue my education and then once I um, graduate and complete that I do have a grad program that I do want to get into as well so that is quite interesting I'm excited I'm excited to get into this so it's hardcover guys I was not expecting this and it's just a regular black hardcover nothing special the side has foiling um, and silver but yeah I'm gonna get back to my reading my ice cream is melted but that's okay two new books I'm excited these will be featured in my October book haul um, I'm pretty sure I have a few more books coming in the mail from them just because they're constantly sending me like five different emails a month so you have rebel fiction rebel nonfiction chosen and then you have Baker publishing that I get four emails from a month so I'm probably missing another uh, house from them but I at, least, I at minimum get four emails a month from them regarding books and most of the times I'm requesting books from them so yeah I haven't gotten any emails yet about October picks so these were actually September picks that the reviews are due in October so I'm glad about that um so I'm actually going to keep on a lookout for the books that they send any emails out for this month um because I know that there are some like great books releasing but I'm excited for these I'm excited I love a contemporary romance um well I don't read too many Christian contemporary romances and I'm not big on them as like a genre but gorgeous cover and it has pink on it so you know if I ever have a book that says choose a book with just title oh like just words there's no people on here and I love the cover or if they ask me about a book with food, this has food on the cover. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, this is cute. This is cute. This is cute. I like. I like. All right, so we have this. Hopefully it's just contemporary romance. And then we have this um, Christian historical fiction, which I'm all, oh, I'm excited for this. I'm probably going to do a reading vlog definitely for this book for sure. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. So I'm going to get back to reading the last few pages before I get to my break. All right, guys. So I'm back. I got to page 210, and I marked a few uh, quotes that I want to share with you guys. So I think it's amazing. But um, the next hundred pages were basically you seeing um, Rahab and her family get used to learning the laws and um, the way that the Israelites live, and then them being moved into um, the camp. You also get to see more of Simone, and you probably saw some clips of me like hitting on my. <laughs> book but for the first like two-thirds of this book Salmon irritates me because he is such a prideful man and doesn't realize how much pride he has and it's like you know for a fact that he is in love with this girl it's like love at first sight and I noticed that when it comes to biblical fiction most of them are either love at first sight or they have like communication issues that's like a trope type thing but um you can tell from the start that he is in love like he he has a thing for Rahab but due to his past situation which i'm not going to divulge you got to read the book um but due to his past situation and just his views on um zanas or harlots or prostitutes whatever you want to call it 
he does not allow himself to actually feel for her and um i just like i said i love when joshua puts him in his place it's phenomenal you probably saw clips of me clapping my hands i was like yes because joshua was coming at um Simone a lot but um i'm gonna just read a few so this is when um <laughs> prior to this we see that uh Simone is just like degrading basically rahab and he think he thinks it's okay to do that because he knows the law and what the Bible says and what the word says and whatnot. So um, Joshua was like, you know what? I think you and I had better go take a walk. And he was using his commander voice. He wasn't using his friend voice or anything. So then he he basically starts going for Simon. He said, there is an underside to every strength you have grown judgmental in your attempt at righteousness. When we attempt or try to be righteous, we end up being self righteous, which is not good. Um, and then he goes further i'm not going to read too much of it but he said the pride is the bane of the righteous on the outside you may seem more upright than a woman with such a past meaning such a past as um rahab she was a harlot but god sees us from the inside you have you've been so busy trying to keep the commandments trying to do everything right that you forgot that your inner world can never bear the scrutiny of a holy god and he had to remind um Simon, like even though you know we know that rahab is a harlot we know that she slept with several men we know that she's an adulterer we we understand this we see it we know what she said it multiple times um her heart is so pure that god will accept her and you being this self-righteous living by the commandments type of guy is making you prideful and now your heart is full of pride so will god forgive you will he accept your pride over her pureness i was like ah i love it i love it um here's a thing where um i'm trying to think who wrote this oh okay so miriam was speaking to um simone because right before miriam had left she left um rahab and rahab basically divulged every sin that her and her family committed um with the uh child sacrifices her being a harlot and the things that they did in their past um and she was telling Salmon and Salmon was just like well what did Joshua say and he, this is what Joshua told her so Joshua said to Miriam the past is God's domain our job is to rescue the present from its rotting carcass and I was just like you know a lot of the times we like to think about the past I know for me that was like a big thing I would always think about the past that, the past mistakes that I made um the things that happened in my past the things that I can't change and that the, my past is not it's no longer in my hands it's in God's hands um and the only thing that I can do regarding my past is let that go and let God do the work and let God do the healing and things like that and then I need to allow the people in my life um such as my pastors my leaders my mom um to help me stay on track so that I no longer go back to that and I think that's such a phenomenal thing um the last one I want to share is uh they were asked the question about um why they needed to make a sacrifice or offering for unintentional sin and the way that Simone broke this down i was like oh yes so he said whether you do the wrong thing intentionally or unintentionally there are consequences let's let us say i break your leg on purpose because i have a grudge against you my anger and lack of self-control causes you a lot of pain now supposing that i break your leg by accident Will your bone ache any less because it was crushed by accident? Will you heal faster because I didn't intend to harm you? Sin is like that. Whether you know what you're doing or not, there is damage. And I'm just like, oh, the beauty in these words, man. Tessa knows how to, like, take the words and just smack you in the face with it. And um, I just, I love that about this book. It doesn't just focus on Rahab as a harlot, but it really dives deep into the heart of a person what sin is the damage that sin causes the damage that another person's sin or views can cause to you and your outlook on life and it's just it's phenomenal so i'm just going i'm gonna take a break um i'm at page 211 so i'm gonna probably read to page 300 let me see yeah i'm gonna read to page 304 when i get back so that's chapter 14 to chapter 21 let me put a bookmark here um i don't know if i want to add my tabs now or towards the end like when i'm done with the book or not i don't know but i did add my green tabs 
you guys can see because i wanted to share those quotes with you guys oh and there was a cute little scene that i definitely have to share because i thought it was funny um there's the romance in this is definitely progressive you can see that they're both attracted to each other from the get-go but rahab has her past that's holding her back and then Salmon has his miscue miss screwed miss miss I can't think of the word but um his thought process is not like aligning with his emotions if that makes sense so um basically there was a scene from there's a part in the story where it's taken directly from the bible um when they were having issues after they got defeated by i i think that's what it's called the city of i or whatever um and they had to figure out why and then god revealed that someone had stolen from him and things like that read it the, the scriptures on the on the um screen you can read that but um they immediately started throwing rocks at uh rahab and towards the end when rahab after she you know got healed and whatnot and went home she was getting ready to go home so miriam who is Salmon's sister was like you know what take this cushion you're gonna need it because of you know the bruise she has on her cheek so she's like you know i don't want it rahab is very um humble and very quiet she doesn't want to take too much from anyone so but Miriam and Rahab are going back and forth and this part cracked me up and it's also a little cute because I know as a reader I know that he has emotions and feelings for Rahab but he chooses to not acknowledge it so he says give me that cushion you are not sleeping on sand tonight and that's final she says but he says not another word not a sigh not a peep not one more objection out of you understand I was rolling because it's funny to me because I like as a reader you can see what's going on in his mind you can see his feelings and stuff but Rahab doesn't know this and um Miriam has like some understanding of what's going on but I think it's so funny and some people might not like that scene they might say that's like possessive or being over the top but it seems like that that I think are like cute when you really understand the context of their of the person's feelings and stuff like that but um yeah I'm gonna take a break I'm gonna take a break um I'm probably gonna put my pajamas on because I'm going to wear um I was supposed to have rehearsal with my sis from church but that probably is not going to happen so I'm gonna take a break um probably we play some Animal Crossing I haven't played Animal Crossing in a minute I mean I played it but probably gonna play some Animal Crossing right now this is my little character she has pink eyes I just changed her eyes I gave her lavender hair She's wearing this gorgeous little outfit. That's my little house. Um, so, that was so random, I know. So, I'm gonna go and come back. Um, the next time you see me, I'll be reading in my PJs on my bed with another snack. So, I'm gonna wait till after dinner. So, probably around 7, 8 o'clock, I'll come back and take two more hours. I'm gonna, yeah, because it's, it's taking me about like an hour to read 100 pages just because I'm really like relaxing and i'm comparing the books together so um yeah i'm gonna try to figure out what to do with these books i have like a stack of books over here you guys can see oh right there i have books there that need to be put up i need to update my reading journal which is here get this garbage off my floor which is here so yeah i'm gonna probably go put some pjs on and um i'll be back hey guys i am back in my room it's almost eight it's 7 50 now so eight o'clock um, and I said I wanted to come back to read between 7 and 8. So from 8 to 10, I'm going to finish reading Pearl in the Sand. Um, I just finished having dinner and I put my candle back on to get my room going. I'm not going to put the video on. Actually, I am. I'm going to find a video to put on. But just had some dinner. My mom threw down. We had baked macaroni, candy yams um potato salad white rice with some red beans i believe it was pork chops but it was like barbecue pork chops was it pork chops or was it not i don't know but it was some good meat um and we had hawaiian bread which i am eating my hawaiian bread now so dinner was bomb i'm tired so i'm gonna try to finish my reading and finish my day so i can lay down but um I put on my nice silk pajamas. I really like these pajamas. It's a two-piece, so yeah. Back to reading now. Um, I'm excited for everything that's getting ready to go down with the romance. I'm here for it. And because the last third of this book is the part that really guts me and makes me cry and things like that. So I'm going to chill back, lounge, read. So let the montage commence.
so I got to page 304. So I got this last one third or last fourth of the last quarter of the book to go. And um, so you guys saw the clips. Um, I was laughing. I was getting upset and stuff like that because I forgot. Um, like I said, the last third of this book really hits home for me. And I forgot there were some scenes with Salmon that kind of like crushed me. And then there were two scenes with um, Rahab that also like one was really, really beautiful. And the other one kind of like pissed me off to a T. But um, I forgot how emotional this book can be. Um, it is just beautiful now i'm personally not seeing any um of the differences only because i've read <laughs> the book so many times that i feel like i'm just reading the same story that i loved i'm sure if i actually take the time to compare it to this book i can find the the um changes it definitely uh reads easier let me just tighten this down a little okay it definitely reads smoother and easier than this one did as i said i enjoyed this one but i did find that there were some things like missing at sometimes but um this reads smoother it's it, it's just i don't know how to explain it but if you have read the original and then you get your hands on this copy you'll know what i'm saying like it feels like a completed story this was completed but i felt like there was still some stuff missing um, I personally have an emotional attachment to this book because of what it represents, what it means, what the title means to me, and how Tessa um, created this novel. But reading this edition, I still feel the same feels, but I feel it a little more with how she changed up some of the wording and how, um, you know, I, I, this it's hard to explain. You have to read the, the new edition to understand. If you have read the old edition of Pearl in the Sand and you do decide to get your hands on this, let me know what you guys think because I feel like there is definitely a difference between this one and this one. It's the same story, okay? Same story, same characters, same writing, but the writing has changed a bit in this one. Um, and that would make sense because she has written several novels since 2010. This is 2020. So there's a difference. But um, there were some scenes with someone that just kind of like me cry on the inside i weeped on the inside i weeped on the inside um and then there was that scene with the snake in rahab just no i wasn't prepared um but we're at the part where they're basically together and um it's definitely an emotional thing because Salmo is he's one of those men that women complain about that will say things out of his mouth and not realize you're trying to be encouraging with your words but your words are having the opposite effects. And I can feel Rahab on a personal level um, because of the relationship I have. Um, my son's father is very, very blunt with his words. Like, you know, not rude or anything like that. Like, he'll tell it like it is. Um, but in doing that, even... Like, you, people can relate to this. Like, if someone's trying to encourage you and they give you words of, like... They give you honest words, but those honest words have a very different, um, you, you, you look, what am I trying to say? I have to find the page because I, I can't. Um, okay. Okay, so, um, he said some things to her, which I'm not going to say, but it kind of pissed me off because it's like, I get that you're trying to be encouraging, but in you trying to encourage her, you're actually bringing her down further. So what she said is, um, her new husband was trying to reassure her, only his words were having the opposite effect. So he was trying to encourage her, trying to give her, you know, some loving words, but they were not loving to her. Um, they had the opposite effect and that they made her want to shut down. And I know for me, that tends to happen a lot where, um, you know, he might say things that I know are in love out of love um they're meant to encourage me but when you're in the frame of mind or the state of mind that you're already ashamed of what you've done or um what you've said or whatever when someone is trying to encourage you and it comes off very strong and they're just a very they have a very strong overpowering personality um personality excuse me it can come off and have a very opposite effect on you um so i can connect with rahab on several occasions of how she felt um mentally and emotionally in regards to her relationship with Simone. and again it's not that Simone was trying to do it um to be rude it was just his personality 
but he does have some issues like i said he's very prideful he doesn't think before he speaks um and he thinks that you know he's more righteous than most people um he doesn't say it outright like hey i'm more righteous but the way he carries himself is very um bigger than life he knows everything it, it, it's just the way that he carries himself so um i love salmon don't get me wrong as much as he irritates me i love me some salmon salmon is amazing salmon is amazing i love him to pieces but i tell you throughout this book he make me want to slap him i, I just want to slap him i be wanting to jump the page and slap him in the face like dude it's quite good to say it like that like like as a reader you understand he's trying to be supportive um, and to reassure her, but also understanding Rahab's uh, mindset and how she grew up, you would see why and how she could take his like reassurance and it have the opposite effect. Of course, like I said, I have personal connection to that because I can definitely relate to Rahab on many occasions. But um, yeah, it's amazing. So I'm at the last third, and um, my favorite part is coming. The title is explained in the book, Pearl in the Sand, is um, explained thoroughly, beautifully, well done, and I cannot wait to get to that part, because that part always, like, mm, it makes me cry. I will say this book will have you emotional. Um, there are some, some powerful quotes in here. She does use scripture. Now, I'm not tabbing it or annotating as I did the first two times or three times that I read this book, um, which I definitely am noticing. So, I'm definitely going to have to do a reread of this, but probably next year sometime um but i'm enjoying it i i am thoroughly enjoying it it is still a five star read to me i don't care this book will forever be a five star if i could make it a 10 star i would but yeah i i am loving it so what i'm going to do is i'm debating if i want some ice cream or not i have that circus cookie ice cream in the freezer and I want to open it, but I already have the unicorn ice cream open, and I already have my Snickers ice cream open. And I think we have some cookies and cream ice cream, and then my brother has Cinnabon ice cream. <laughs> so, but then I also have my, let me go grab my chocolates. Let me grab them, they're right over here. So, because I keep looking over there and that's showing you guys. So I have this six count thing of decadent white chocolate macadamia nut cookies and um, i love these so much chocolate macadamia nut cookies they're so huge i ate one last night um they're really really good i got it from walmart and i didn't realize how uh good the sweets and stuff are from the walmart bakery they're delicious we bought um a box of donuts good but um this right here i talked about this chocolate before <laughs> in my other reading vlogs um the Ger i don't know if it's gerardelli or gerardelli but i'm gonna say gerardelli chocolate squares and the white chocolate caramel i am obsessed with this this is definitely a decadent luxurious white chocolate i've had white chocolates before and very like from hershey's and stuff like that but this is a whole nother type of white chocolate like this is that my son is going for the weekend so i'm gonna have me a nice mommy time and be all you know spunky and snazzy with the wine glass and some soda in the wine glass or stuff like that so um yeah i picked up two more bags i went through like three bags <laughs> previously um this is amazing it is about five bucks though at walmart and it's not a lot in here I don't even know. They don't even tell you how many is in here. But I believe it's like 20, maybe 25. Pro less than 25 pieces are in here. So I go through these like really fast. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. I do need to put my daggone tabs in here though. Because I have been writing. Like you guys can see I've been in, like marking. I haven't really written much in here. But I only have one third, like one quarter left to go. Um, chapter 21 up to chapter, what chapter is this? I'm trying to see the chapter. All right. 26, the epilogue is 27. So that is six chapters left to go. Um, and I'm probably going to have to do like a side-by-side -side in depth uh kind of read through comparing them because i honestly i can't tell the difference only because i've read this book so many times and um the differences are not like wham bam in my face as of right now because i'm just so engrossed and i love this story so much so i'm definitely gonna have to figure out exactly i think i'm meet we're having a meeting with tessa on monday 
So I'm gonna ask because I'm I'm not I guess because I'm not actively seeking the new thing. So I'm definitely gonna have to ask her like exactly what did she do? Because I know she said there's like new scenes, new new um some changes to the chapters and stuff like that. And some of them I can see, some of them I'm not really paying attention to because like I said, this is a beloved story, so it don't matter if she added 30 chapters or 40, I'm still gonna love this book. <laughs> <laughs> so um and because i've read it so many times it's such ease reading through it without a problem so um i read it i read the chapter in an hour of course so it is 901 so i don't i don't know what i'm gonna do i think mm, i think i'm gonna go get me some ice cream and then i'm gonna stretch out on my bed and read the last quarter of this book and that'll be it for this vlog you guys i hope this vlog has been spoiler free um i haven't been giving too many details as much as i want to as much as i want to um and i really want to gush and talk about exactly what pearl and the sand means but you guys have to read the book you have to read the book so i'm gonna go get me some ice cream i said i want some ice cream now i'm like do i really want the ice cream i don't know but i'm about to um i'm gonna read some and then come back towards the end when i'm like on chapter 26 or so whenever i get to the chapter that talks about i'm really gonna look in this book to see where that chapter is now <laughs> i'm trying to find that chapter uh is this it okay so that's it so what chapter is this 24 when i get to chapter 24 wait hold on how many chapters was this, this this original book that's a good question Is it like the same 26 chapters? 27? Yeah, it's the same amount of chapters, so I don't see any additional chapters. So I think she just added content in between each chapter. So um, when I get to chapter 24, I'm going to come on um, because that is the chapter where she talks about the pearl in the sand. And it's going to break my heart. And just to show you guys how much I love that scene. <laughs> I'm trying not to show you too much. Ah, but that's the scene that I love so much. And just it's amazing so when i get to chapter 24 i'll come back on camera um and you guys will see me read the last few chapters and hear my final thoughts and then that's gonna be it for this video know how to feel guys like i don't know if i left that clip in um i probably left it in but um the chapter i was waiting for chapter 24 literally just like it pulls at my heart so much and it just brings back so much remembrance of um how much god has loved on me and this book is just so 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 powerful and amazing and it will always have a special place in my heart it will always be my number one favorite biblical fiction book it will always I, I, there's no words like i really want to read that part to you guys so much but if you have pearl in the sand chapter 24 read that just be prepared to have tissues okay i tried hard not to cry on camera 
some tears was trying to come out which is why i was like doing all this because like i even had to take my glasses off um because it always guts me and reminds me of my worth that no matter how filthy i may feel no matter how much guilt or shame i may feel over my past over you know mistakes that i make today or tomorrow or in the future or whatever no matter what i will forever be a jewel in god's treasure and i know that probably sounds backwards but i just said but i god has this immense amount of treasure we are all a part of his treasure church treasure chest and um each of us are a jewel a ruby a pearl a diamond whatever we're each a special jewel and no matter how defiled we may feel no matter how dirty we may feel no matter what we might say out of our mouths no matter what we might think of ourselves in god's eyes we are precious we are lovable we are capable of being restored like this book does it for me every time like i i don't have any other words just know that i love pearl in the sand i have two copies of it and i will be purchasing my mom a copy of the book for herself um this edition specifically for herself she was reading this book as you can see this is her little tab <laughs> but um i wrote so much in this book like i wrote a lot of notes in this book this book i didn't write as much but um i just was enjoying the read it is just it's everything so i don't even know what to say except for happy release day to pearl in the sand to tessa abshar the 10th anniversary edition i can't believe it's been 10 years for this book like that is amazing and i have loved it for years uh i've loved it so i am i, I don't even know like i want to display this on my shelf I need to add my tabs in so before I do like an Instagram photo I will put all my tabs in probably Monday I'll do that because Mondays are my chill days I'll probably just add my tabs into the book but yeah I read it today um in total that was about four and a half maybe five hours um I read 100 pages in four sections so that's yeah about four and a half hours five hours that I read and um I feel so complete like my heart it's not as effective as like reading it as a first-time reader because I've read it so many times but reading it again um, like I said I can't tell all of the update updates and changes but I can see the subtle uh, inclusion of new words the edits that were made um, and the way that it read was a lot more smoother it's hard to explain like I said if you have read the original um, edition of it that came out in 2010 and then you have this copy definitely read like read this copy and tell me how you guys feel because I feel like this is much smoother it's it's more of a completed story now I really wish you would have included a chapter of like the childbirth I don't know why I just thought that would have been cool um to see but uh it's still the same 27 chapters it's 26 with the epilogue but you definitely can see um, some slight changes with words being included paragraphs and sentences and stuff like that it was beautiful i highly recommend you guys check it out i'm just in awe of the beauty that is this book um i definitely love this new cover over the old one you can tell this is definitely like a decade <laughs> of change but this is everything i mean i did like salmon on this cover a little just a little bit but um yeah, I, I'm just gonna go. This was beautiful. I recommend it tenfold. I give it a 10 out of 10 star rating. Um, it is still my number one favorite book out there. I will leave my written review for the old version as well as for this new version. I'm not even gonna write my review tonight. I'm gonna have my review posted up on the day of my release date. It'll probably go up on Goodreads on Monday, but Tuesday it'll be on my blog and um i'll probably do a little like a few more instagram features of this book just because it is everything i'll probably do um on the release date i'll probably do like a video of my favorite quotes Ooh, i could do that pick a few of my favorite quotes out of the book maybe five i'll limit myself to five so i'm gonna do that um and pick my favorite quotes that's gonna be hard Ugh. 
it's gonna be real hard but i'm gonna do that but yeah i think this is epic i just i love tessa you guys know this i highly recommend you check out all of her books like all of them all of them definitely be pearl in the sand and then i would say go into harvest of rubies and harvest of gold harvest of rubies and harvest of gold will crack you up literally it's like her most comical series it has some um hardcore hard hitting topics that it discusses but i feel like of all of the books that she has written that one will make you laugh the most um but i'm excited for anything that anything else she writes like i'm i'm like on i'm like on the i'm the first person online for the next thing that she writes okay she also has um a bible study series coming out on her the way home i think that's what it's called uh bible study if i'm wrong the cover is here she has a bible study coming out on october 13th for this and i believe it's going to meet every tuesday at 7 or 8 p.m you have to join the facebook group um she mentioned it on ig i will leave the ig post for you guys and the uh, the uh not instagram the facebook information down below but i'm gonna go because my brother is talking a little loud and i'm tired i got church in the morning so i need to get some rest because i do have a dance um, i'm probably gonna play the song i need to dance to um before i go to bed but yeah it was amazing i love it i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it wasn't as spoilery as my other ones are i'm learning you guys i'm learning i'm taking your suggestions and i'm learning but that is it i will see you guys in the next video bye